Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to this session and um happy jazz day to us all. Um, so um from the Jazz Special Hall, we'll be celebrating GIS Day by um giving us a brief overview of what GE is and how we could apply it um to simplify remote sensing. So um before we dive right in, let's say a little bit about the hub. So um, basically, we noticed um, a, a learning gap, a skill and learning gap between what has been taught in the African schools and um, what the reward requires. So um, that brought about um, our vision to create the nurturing communities for geoprofessionals and also our vision to provide these geoprofessionals with accessible, with accessible skills and knowledge to meet up with international standard. So um, at the moment, we provide um, tutorials on YouTube. So um, I can do well to subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and also share our videos. Um, you can also turn on our notification. So anytime um, we upload new videos, um, you'll be... Anytime we upload new videos, you get notified. <clears throat> All right. Um, so a little bit about... A little bit about me. So um, my name is Arim Babatunde David. Um, my research interest um, is basically in disaster response system and um, emergency response, and also um, monitoring crop health using remote sensing. Mm -hmm. I graduated from Obafemi Awolo University in Nigeria. I studied solar and geoinformatics. I currently work at Trade Buzzer. Um, where we actually digitize the process of agriculture. All right, so um, let's meet Google Earth Engine. So um, I'll be playing a video to just like give us a little bit overview of what um, Earth Engine is and what we can actually use it for. Um, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, so um, that's um, a brief overview of what the platform use, what the platform looks like, what we could actually um, use the platform for the use cases, and how we could actually um, make the best of the platform. So um, to me, when people ask me what um, Google Earth Engine is, I tell them Google Earth Engine is basically remote sensing made easy because traditionally remote sensing used to be it used to be ethic, you know, you have to like go to USGS, download your images, 
you know, um, do some little bit of um, um, pre-processing on the image, you know, clip the image or you mosaic your image, your area of interest. And sometimes your area of interest falls within like two two scenes, so you have to like download and all that. I mean, the process is just like very ethic, you know, you have to like do a lot of stuff before you even start to um, post-process and all of that. So, but Google Ads Engine just came into the game as a um, a game changer and it really made life easy. So, um, Ads Engine hosts like all of the satellite images we like get from USGS, um, the Landsat and Sentinel. Now, it, it archives it and we can just um, make a request um, through their APIs and just get any image we want. So, we don't have to like go all through the process of downloading. Imagine your area of interest is like um, very small and um, the traditional method you have to like download the old, the old scene. Then you have to like keep to get your area of interest out. But but with this, you just like get the exact area you want. You don't need to, you don't need to like you know go through the old download process and all of that. Um, and it's for the data set. It has over forty petabytes of geospatial data and over thirty years um, of historical images. Alright, so um, enough said. Let's go through a brief, a brief demo of the platform. Alright, so um, this is what the interface looks like. This is what it looks like. So you just go to code.googleengine.com. Um, so if you don't have an account, um, the account is basically free for research purposes. Um, and um, for research purposes, basically, so um, you can just go to to the website um, Google Earth Engine. Sorry, you can go to the website EarthEngine.com. Then you sign up um, to to be part of the solution and to to have an account. All right. So um, let's let's get let's get started. All right. So um, this is the code interface. You know. This is what it looks like. So here we like get to like write a little bit of codes, and also here we could search for data set. So I could just say Sentinel, and I get like Sentinel images, you know. So um, aside that, let me just erase that. All right. So we have the inspector. So the inspector is basically to inspect our map. So if I click somewhere here now, it like gives me latitude and longitude of the particular point I clicked. We have the console. So the console is where we get um the results of whatever we are trying to like print. We have the tax. So this tax is where we get um notifications about what we are um say uploading to Google Drive. And yeah um I really like this part of of Earth Engine because um it provides us with scripts. So these are like scripts I've written in the past and also um documentations I mean, I started Google Earth Engine just um, reading documentations, and it was, I mean, it helped a lot um, until I learned from. Once I learned from Java, Gandhi is, is an Indian man, and he really simplified uh, the entire. Um, learning process for Google Earth Engine, and also we have your assets here. Yeah? So assets is basically um, where you like get to upload stuff. So you get to, like upload your own like data sets, say shape out of your area, your area of interest. You can upload them and all of that. So um, let's just um, get started. So let's just um, have a simple script. But what the script will do is to basically um, get just um simplify the the old the old traditional process of remote sensing so say just get um just get the image of an area let's get the image of an area so um to do that we'll be working with um say sentinel so we'll come here and we search for sentinel all right so um i tried searching for sentinel so we can see um sentinel one sentinel two and all of that so i'll just um Click on Sentinel 2. All 
right so we can see um, the description i can just do this and um, come here so it's going to load up all right um so it's it's it loaded up so this is um sentinel 2 um we can explore it these are the image properties um we can come here to the bands you can see all the listed bands and um we can also see the description all right so this is this the description now um the beautiful thing is that there's just this uh, code snippet you can actually copy you know you just copy this code snippet and actually um uh, paste it you could paste it here and um You could paste it here and you know get started with um, the work so if i just run this so now it's it's, it's showing is loading here it just loads up so it loads up um an image for us so basically it's it's almost as simple as this so this is like uh it's a sentinel image loaded up you can you know you can zoom and all of that so um but we won't be working with this this is just like um a, a code snippet we got from um, earth engine so we'll be working with our own um, code instead so i'll just um delete all of this then we'll start working with our own data set all right so the first thing to do is to um, import um, the sentinel data so um, we'll be importing sentinel2 all right so i'll just call it um i'll call it s2 all right so um remember while working um on google ads engine we're working with we're working with um uh, javascript so everything we are doing we have to like declare a variable by by the keyword vr so um we have to we have to declare a variable basically um by the keyword vr so um so now this is our sentinel2 data set so i could just go ahead and say print s2 and um, i can run this so now you see it's it's an image collection so now saying print s2 so it's telling us that the collection query aborted after accumulating over 5000 elements so um what we are trying to of harness here is all the images um sentinel has actually gotten since since um 2015 so um if we check um if we check the um data set okay this this data set has been available since 2017 so you know we are trying to like get all the images from 2017 and like that's like way too much for um sentinel for the um code editor to actually process and all of that so we have to basically filter so um, the first thing I want us to do is to um, filter. So let's um, filter by date. Um, so um, to filter by date, what we just need to do is to first declare variable say um, filter one. All right. So this is our first filter, and we would say now we want to like filter all the images in this collection by particular date. So we would say s two dot and call the function um then call filter all right so now once we want to filter we want to filter by particular date so what we have to do is just come to the documentation here and um, look for uh, the, the date filter we could actually use so um we see here from e filter so we have um filter date so you can just read this and it filters the collection to like a specific date we we actually um, give to it so we could just do this and say um all right so i'm i'm using the um auto complete so to to auto complete you could just use um control and space bar so once you use the control and space bar it actually like uh, gives you like what you need to do so you don't make errors so um i want to fill that from say 20 20 
zero one and now to filter till um just the year the year filter 2021 zero one zero one all right so um, that's that's our first filter so now we could go on to to make other filters but um before that let's just uh let's comment this out and print um filter one all right we could just click on it here all right it's still telling us that oh it's like way too much like the images are like way too much you can like bring it out so um let's just um, go ahead and apply further filters so um i'll just comment this and so let's say um so let's say filter two so now for filter two we'll be filtering by um metadata so let's just So now we'll be featuring by the metadata. So if we come here to um, the Sentinel 2 data, we could come here to the bands and we could see, um, sorry, the um, image properties. So now we could see this cloudy percentage, um, cloudy pixel percentage. So that's what we are actually like interested in. So we want like filter by clouds now. So we could just come back here and we could apply the filter. So say, the image again s2 dot um filter and now we want to filter it by um by the metadata so to filter by metadata um you you come to the documentation again and you know just look through and you search for the particular filter to use so yes this is the filter we'll be using so we we'll we'll be filtering by the metadata so this is like right filter to use so um i'll just to complete again so i'll just search for the filter i want to use um, all right so um, i want to filter by the cloudy pixel percentage and i want to filter it when once it's less than um, 30. all right so let's let's see that so now let's print um filter two all right um it's still still looking like a lot all right let's let's comment this and let's go for filter three so um for the third filter we'll be filtering by um a specific location so um so we'll be filtering by Location. All right. So um, to filter by location, we'll declare variable again. So let's call it filter three. So now we want to filter the image. So you know, remember we use our, our keyword filter. And now we want to filter. So we just again look through all these filters and see what filter can we actually um filter our image with. So now this is um something that could work. So we could filter by band. All right. So, uh, but before we filter by band, I would just like to um, zoom to Lagos, Nigeria. All right. So um, this is this is Lagos, Nigeria. All right. So um, what I could do is to um see this add marker i could just like click it and um drop just drop a filter around lucky in lagos right so um just drop um a point around lucky in lagos so now this geometry i'll just call it um lucky and that's the place in lagos All right so i can actually filter by by i can actually filter to this particular location so um i just want to like get all the images that actually within all the images sentinel cut for um lucky so we could actually see it and we won't have like we won't, we won't be like restricted anymore 
by saying um, the query has over 500 elements. So uh, let's do that. So we'll be filtering by bounds. So to do that, we'll apply the ee dot filter again. All right. So ee dot filter um, filter bounds. All right. So our, our geometry is um, lucky. All right. And let's see. Let's print filter three. All right, so now we have like um, 211 elements. So um, from um, the data set we have from, I think, 2017 for this particular um, location is about um, 211 elements. So we could like check the properties. We could also check the um, features. So these are like the images we have inside. So, you know, the images will also have their bands properties and all of that so all right so that is um how we could actually like filter to get the images but you know filtering one, one after the other like this is actually um i'm taking a lot of time so we don't necessarily have to like filter um like you don't necessarily have to like filter one after the other we could actually apply all the filter ones so to apply all the filter ones we just have something like this um say declare variable call it call it filtered say filtered is equals to s2 dot filter and now we can start we can start applying all these filters we've done so we just i'll just copy and paste so i'll just copy this and paste it now you could just um for consistency the spaces doesn't actually like really, really um the spaces are not really necessary but for consistency sake i'll just like try to so my code will like look neater so i'll just like have some space there so now so like um combine all these filters together all we have to do is to just use dots so the dot is like a chain like that links like everything together so we just put dot filter again and after that copy the next filter all right so this is the next filter and apply the we paste it so the next thing again is dot filter all right so we just copy and paste this so um essentially s2 is what like links everything together and like these are all the filters we like want to apply we want to apply the update want to apply the cloud percentage and want to like filter it down to like it so now what we could do is also say print the filter all right so you print the filter um let's see what we have all right now we have 15 elements so previously we are having like um 211 elements because it's like giving us all the it, it was given all the um data sets that we add for uh, all the data sets since now actually add for that particular location but now we are actually telling um like since we are, we are trying to like filter it to say a particular date say from 2020 to 2021 these are the images we want and we don't want any images that um the the um so we don't want any images that is actually less than that has cloud that is cloudy like the cloud percentage is like greater than 30 percent so if we check the first image here and go to the properties of the first image um you could see the cloudiness is just 3.8 so if, if you look at other images say the second image or the third image rather and you look at the properties you'll see okay see the cloud the cloudiness of this image is just 23 percent so it's actually following what we've actually given to it and it's filtering it down to um, our area of interest so uh, that's that's just um how it works and now say we want to visualize what what we've been doing so far so we just um, add a simple line of code so let's say um, visualizing all right so um, to visualize we could just 
say map so now this map is referring to this interface where the map is can you see it's referring to this map so i want to add what we've done to this map so we we, we write dot add and we're adding a layer right so now what layer do we want to add we want to add this filtered so we see it here so we just say filtered all right so we, we run this i can comment this out now since i don't really need it all right so we could we could see here that it's running but we have something relatively void of of colors like it's just black and we have um we have some i think cloud around here all right so uh this is basically because we didn't um specify um visualization parameters we just add we just add the um compiler to think for itself and when the compiler is thinking for itself what it does is it doesn't use like the rgb so you come here to the bands so what, what it just did was um putting band one in place of red band two in place of blue and band three in place of green so that's why we have that um, um color composite right there so um, to correct that you could just come here to this settings and um, from these settings you could see band you could see it's actually taking the rgb see this is rgb and it's taking it as band one to three so we just have to correct that to band four band three and band two so um but but before we do that let me just um inspect let me just close this let me just inspect somewhere on the map and let's see what we have so um looking at this um we have like the values ranging from zero to about 255 so um i basically um i'm checking this you can see like from zero to like three thousand so i'm basically checking this because we need to like um, specify the range here so now you just come back to just fill this up again four three and two all right so now we could just have zero to say three thousand all right so you could just say apply yes now it's it's loaded up as um it's loaded up basically as what we recognize as a sentinel image so um that's that's just as simple as that so i mean just look at how fast we could actually like load up an image we don't want we we'll filter the image to and to our area of interest we've actually basically we, we just we've like saved the whole lot of traditional process you know previously it used to be like way harder but now it's just it's just like almost at the snap of my finger all right so um if i run this again it's going to load blank again it's going to load blank again so um instead of like coming here to like go to the setting every time we could actually give it some visualization parameters and we could apply these um parameters anytime we are adding the map to layer so let's just say um All right so now let's let's give it some visualization parameters so to give it um the visualization parameter um would also declare variable let me call it um this but since we are using rgb we just say r rgb this and um it's it's it will be a dictionary so just all that and so now the minimum value remember the minimum value was um zero we have a comma the maximum value was um that we used was three thousand and now um the bands we are working with so for the bands so we are working with um four three two so um band four Band three, and finally, band two. All right. So um, that's that. So now, once we are um, adding the map to layer, <coughs> it's 
excuse me. All right, so now we could have this, and we could have um, the visualization parameter. So let's just say um, RGB, RGB this. Then we could name it. We could name it say um, filtered or something. So now if I run this. It loads up automatically so i don't necessarily have to um i don't necessarily have to come over here and you know always um took this so i mean it's just really cool i mean i i really enjoy like working with google Earth engine because it kind of gives me superpowers you know over traditional remote sensing um users so um now we could actually see some clouds here so um, we could actually remove the cloud but um that that will be in another video you know teaching us how to like max out the cloud but all right so um now i i i want to delete this i want to delete this so um so say we have um so this is the proper way to delete it pardon me for that so um say say we we have like um we have an area say this is our area of interest somewhere here is my area of interest all right and i'll just call this just to like preserve the properties i'll call it lucky again all right so now say i i i want to like get um i want to get just um the clipped image of just my area of interest so what i'll just do first is say let me let me try to remove these clouds by um so to remove the cloud, like I, I there's a oh it's a all of process. So I won't be talking about it in, in in this video. But a very simple way to remove it is to have a median function that actually um, gives the median of all the pixels and it kind of eliminates the clouds. So uh, to do that, I'll just um, add the composite and I'll say um, variable composite. So the filter data set we've been working with like all along we'll just um call the median function on it all right and um that's all so um what 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 we do now we can also say um map to add we can add layer we can add this composite to to a layer so we we'll just call it um Composite and I'll call this um, median composite. All right, so we just run this. All right, so um, after running that, this is what we have. You can see the clouds there, uh, no more there. All right, so um, now we just want to like, get the image of our AI. So let's just say um, variable. AI. So area means our area of interest. So now our area of interest will just be the composite, um, and we'll just clip it to Lekki, which is what we like declared as area of interest before. So let's just run this so we know we don't have any errors. All right, cool. So now that it runs, we could just say um, map dot add layer again. All right, so let me just comment this. All right, so now we are interested in the AOI and um, let's call this Lekki. All right, so let's run this. All right, so um, I'll just um, zoom over here. We could see we've actually reduced, 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 and now we have just our area of interest that we're actually interested in. All right, so um, and let me just like put this off. So now we could actually see this is like um, where we're actually interested in. So you could actually see how we've scaled down and reduced all this traditional process just um, using this like simple procedure.
So now what, what 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 we could do finally is to like export export the data so um export export the data sets all right so to export we use the keyword exports all right so you could actually come to the um, documentation and also look for look for the exports the export function and um all right, this is it here. So now I want to export this image. So you could export image to um, to drive. You could export image to cloud. So I will be using this export to drive. All right. So now then I'll just auto complete by using um, Control and Shift. So you see the exports now. We're exporting image now. We're exporting image to drive. I'll just press that again. So it auto fills everything for me. So. Um, All right, so um, this should um, be this way. All right, a little bit description. You have a folder you want it to be. Um, prefix name, dimension, region. We don't need that. Scale. All right, we need scale. So I think for the rest, we could actually remove them. We'll be talking about them like in this video. All right. So now um. So it should be in a dictionary. All right. So um, image the image we're exporting is the um, AOI. So description you could say um, you could say um, media. Um, one name would best fit it, say lucky image. All right, so um, if you have a folder in your drive, um, you want it to be, you could just like put the name of the folder. So if, if you don't have a folder, um, you could just like create a new folder and call it, um, call it um, GEE. Um, now the scale, since we are working with Sentinel, we just put 10 meter. All right, so um, I think I'm missing commas. Pardon me, I was trying to like figure out what the error was. Um, it's actually um, meant to be in quotes. Right, so um, I think we are error free. <coughs> we are error free. We are free from errors from now. All right, so let's just run this. G not defined. Um, let me see that. All right, so let's run this now. All right, so now running this, we can see it has like tags, and now so once I hit run, it automatically um, uploads on my Google Drive. So um, that's a brief overview of um, Google Ads Engine. Um, I'm glad you guys stayed to the end. Don't forget to um, subscribe to the channel. So I appreciate you guys, and um, thank you so much for 
your attention and listening thus far um like the video share our videos and kindly subscribe to the channel bye